the hidden closet in my head was like opened up. And uh, I was like, wow, I think I'm gay. I'm Eric Roscoe and I'm an English major at Pacific. I'm Malcolm Gingras. I'm uh, 20. I'm a political science major and I'm going into my third year here at uh, Pacific. My name is Ellie. I'm 19. I am a sophomore flute performance major. My name is Joey Chan. I am a music industry and business major here at Pacific and I'm an inclusion coordinator for the Pride Resource Center. Okay. I'm Melanie Dodson, and I am a music industry studies major. Hi, my name is Carl, and I'm an English major with a minor in teaching professions. I'm in my last year here at Pacific. Hello, my name is Jordan Telgenhoff. I am a music management major, and I am 21 years old. So, my name is Alexis. I did all four years of my undergrad here in the biology department and got my BS in biology. And now I'm currently a second year master's student in the biology department as well. I also work in the Pride Resource Center. I'm the program assistant. My name is Burke Wallace. I'm a visiting lecturer at the University of Pacific, uh, which means that I teach a freshman PAX 1 seminar. My name is Eddie. I'm a graduate student at the Bernard School of Education, and I am majoring in student affairs. So my name is Derek Izetti. Um, this is actually my fourth year teaching at Pacific. I'm up in the Department of Speech-Language Pathology. My first realization that I was uh, part of the LGBT community, uh, specifically gay, when I was in seventh grade, so middle school. And I don't know exactly when it clicked, like what specific day, but it was like a day where I was like, oh. <laughs> I realized that the feelings that I had for my friends were genuine, and they were kind of like synonymous with love, and now I can say that I like, love all of my friends, especially my female friends. Um, I realized that I was missing the sexual aspect of that kind of attraction. So I did love them, but it was very much how I felt for my sister, and I hadn't been distinguishing that. I could never see myself falling in love romantically with a woman. Um, and that was something that was, like when I was dating girls in high school, it just, that, it wasn't there. Like the, that same sort of like, I guess, just. I don't know, when, like, when you're in love and you're just like, oh my gosh, every like cell in my body is alive with feeling, like when like you like hold the hands with hold hands with someone you love, or just like when you first kiss like someone who you just have such strong feelings for. It's it's so different and I knew that I couldn't get that um, like with a woman. So I grew up in a really conservative religious town and I I didn't even know what gay was until I was around 10 or 11. But I've known that I was strictly into women since I was like in first grade. That's just, I didn't have attraction to boys, I was just into girls. Um, even if I didn't know what lesbian was at that time of my life. Throughout high school I kind of tried on a lot of the different labels, different, different sexualities, um, bisexual, pansexual. Uh, none of them ever really felt right. Uh, they didn't really fit for me. Um, and eventually I ended up with queer because that is the most uh, generic, um, like all-encompassing all uh, sexuality. And that's just not straight. Um. I couldn't figure out why I was attracted to girls, but still attracted to guys. Um, I would think that I'm attracted to a girl and be like, no, wait, but I, I'm, I'm attracted to guys, so that's not real. It starts back in high school when uh, I knew about that my sexuality was different from other people around me. And I think the thing that was most interesting for me is that um, my faith as a Christian, I grew up as a Christian, I was baptized as a Christian, is a huge cent is like a huge part of my life and like centered to my life. So I can't, it's really hard, it was really hard through high school to go through uh, my faith and also identify with the LGBTQ community. And the reason for that is because for so long uh, the Christian faith has been scrutinized because there's always extremists that say that they don't support that li like the lifestyle um, or the choices that people make when truth is is that those people are wrong 
I started to realize that I was interested in both male and females. Um, maybe around 16 or 17, something like that. And because I grew up in such a strict religious household, it was kind of difficult to express that and really acknowledge certain things with my family. Um, so I did keep it to myself for a long time. So I first came out as bi to my um, friends. I confided in some friends. I sent them some messages and was like, hey, so I think I'm gay. Um, I knew something was holding me back and it was definitely that feeling of not being true to myself, <clears throat> not being true to everyone else. Um, that's a terrible feeling. But coming out to my family was a little bit harder. Um, I, I knew that they were accepting people and that they would most likely be completely fine with it, but I think, you know, regardless of your family situation, it's for most people it's still very hard um, to take that step to reveal something about yourself like that um, and just not knowing how they're going to react. I told Gina, I can tell everyone now, and like, but no, no. <laughs> Once, once, once you like you're about to tell someone, it's, you get that fearful feeling like, oh my God, am I gonna get, am I gonna be accepted or rejected? I had no problems being gay, uh, and I never really faced any like, interpersonal backlash. It did take me a while to come out to my family, not because they had ever expressed any like homophobic sentiment, but there's always that fear, which I think all members of the LGBT community can like associate with the idea of having an identity that, they, that isn't readily visible. And even though you might feel like your parents love you when they've told you your whole life that they love you, you've grown up in a world where one way or another you've probably heard about the hatred and the bigotry specifically directed at our community. So I was 13 and it was my birthday and I had a girlfriend and I had like probably 60 kids at my house for like a barbecue, right? So I figured my mom was probably super occupied with all the people there. You know, she walked in on us just making out or whatever. And um, so that's basically how my mom found out. And um, she locked herself in her room for the rest of my birthday party. So it was kind of awkward. I had to go to my mom because I think moms know best. And especially my mom knows me best. And at that critical moment, I needed someone to comfort me. And going to my friends wasn't exactly going to do that for me. And at the time, I actually even told my friends what was happening in my life because it was something I was struggling with, living my faith out, but also um, discovering something so new about myself and embracing it so quickly. I was already kind of prepared for my dad to say some hurtful things. and. He did tell me, he said, like, we must have made a mistake in raising you. You know, we put you in all these sports and everything. And I told him, I said, that, but that doesn't make a difference. You know, like, I, I am who I am, and that's all I can tell you. Um, you know, I'm not sure, like, why, why I am this way, but it's not easy, you know, so I, like, ba balancing faith and, and receiving all this criticism. But you can, like, like, I told him, like, I... I can be a Christian and I can also feel the way I feel and if I'm gonna love a woman, I'll love a woman. If I love a man, I'll love a man and that's just the way it is. Uh, my coming out story is more of a being forced out of the closet. Uh, I was, I grew up uh, and have always been a, a strongly religious person and when I uh, went away to college I went to a, a college much like Pacific that had uh, religious roots but was not overtly religious but I got the, the brand of Christianity that I was involved in uh, looked down on homosexuality. And so I spent much of my college career um, trying not to be gay. What ensued after that was a seven year process of me trying not to be gay. Uh, everything on the outside in my life looked great. I was successful in the career that I had chosen. Uh, I presented myself as happy, and in many ways I was happy. I was fulfilled, I had great friendships, I had a job that I liked, uh, but inside I always had this struggle. Uh, I was teaching in a Christian school, uh, and one of my uh, so-called friends uh, from college uh, that knew that I was attracted to men, uh, as we used to say, um, thought that it was wrong that I was um, becoming more okay with um, being gay, 
and still teaching in a Christian environment. And so he took it upon himself to call the Christian school that I was working at at the time and let them know that I was gay. And they called me in one day after practice and confronted me with that, uh, asked if I was gay. Uh, and I said uh, at that time I was comfortable saying, yes, I am. Uh, and they immediately fired me. Not only that, but my friends from college, the community that had supported me for so long, uh, when I turned to them to support me, one by one, each of them uh, told me that they not only supported the action that my uh, former friend had done in outing me to the school and getting me fired, uh, but that they no longer wanted to be my friend because they did not believe that someone could be both Christian and gay. Uh, so my life utterly turned upside down. Uh, I lost the support group and the community I had. I lost my job and my livelihood uh, and my greatest fear. When you're in the closet, I think your fear is always of being found out. And my greatest fear came true. Uh, not only was I found out, but it cost me my livelihood and it cost me my friends. My faith uh, has always been important to me uh, and is still important to me, but my faith does not look the same way that it did when I was in college. I began to view it in the cultural context uh, and in the um, through a critical lens, and that helped me be able to reconcile both my faith and my sexuality. Now that I look back, I am thankful that uh, I was forced out. Uh, I would rather it have not have been so painful, but it got me to where I am today. And now, a decade later, I'm happy. Uh, I'm married. We just adopted a son, and we are happy. I don't have to hide. Uh, I'm not worried about my job and my livelihood being caught up in not being gay. Um, because it doesn't matter. Having lost my community and my friends, having lost my job, uh, I turned to the LGBTQ community in Sacramento where I was living at the time. Uh, there was a resource center or a pride center up there that I got involved in a youth support group uh, that they had uh, and I got very involved in the No on Prop 8 campaign. Uh, and that uh, for me was healing in the sense that I was able to find another community that accepted me uh, as I was, both as a gay man and also as someone uh, of faith. Uh, and I still would call myself a faithful person today. Uh, I would just add uh, that I'm a faithful gay person today, and I'm not ashamed of that. It was like an awkward month where I was kind of depressed, and I wrote this cool song about it. Um, that helped me cope with the process. When I turned 18, I went to my first year in college. Um, and there I felt like it was a little bit easier for me to talk to other people about what I was feeling or what I was going through. And What helped me in my coming out process were my friends. It was just rough, so having those friends there and being able to talk to them and having them support me throughout the process was really nice. Um, I had a really nice boss. I had two bosses, I had two jobs that summer, and uh, I told them, and they were both really supportive as well, and I was really fortunate to have a job where um, sexuality and uh, sexual identity is something that you can be open about and not have to hide your identity with. I guess the difficulty and the coming out experience altogether um, it wasn't so much about coming out to my family, but more about just existing in this world, um, being yourself. Uh, you know, that's, for a lot of people, that's easy to do, but uh, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, um, that's not always easy. I do sometimes feel weird when I'm holding hands with my boyfriend um, around Pacific, like, I... I can't, I haven't gotten fully, like, comfortable. Like, I'm, I'm okay with, like, showing him affection and holding his hand in public, but there's just sometimes, like, with, um, like, larger crowds that I get a little bit nervous. Or when we're crossing the street, I don't like to hold his hand. I mean, there's, like, part of me that's, like, some angry person could just run us over. Uh, so there are times where I do feel vulnerable. Um, I don't quite know how to shake that. I don't think that's something that can be shaped. It's not like you come out once, everyone knows, and everyone has their reactions, and then it's over with, and you're living your life out of the closet. It's um, every day. I think that even though, um, as a society, things are getting more accepting, um, you just don't, uh, 
you don't you don't know. I think it's hard to identify places that are safe now. I mean, after after Pulse, um, it's just places that you thought were sanctuaries aren't. People can shatter things so quickly. Um, I was comparing myself. Uh, in terms of attractiveness with basically kind of like the female stereotype which is already unhealthy so then for a like relatively large on like 6'1 or so male to be like oh I, I, I should also be thin and like somewhat effeminate and like the image that I had of like what I needed to be to attract uh, other guys was definitely like not good for me and I kind of like maintained being underweight uh, for quite a few years and I had very weird concepts of what it meant to like be in a relationship because I didn't have a concept for that, like a good example. And I think, you know, as someone who is not gay and not straight, um, I'm coming out, but I'm not coming out completely because a lot of people assume once I talk about my girlfriend or they see me holding hand with a girl that I'm a lesbian um, and I'm not. <laughs> um. uh, when I first came here I had long hair and um, I don't dress stereotypically gay um, and a lot of people, most people assumed that I was straight and it, it's, even though it's not like the main focus of my identity, it's still when someone says something about you that's not true you don't really, it doesn't feel good, and I didn't really know how to correct them because it's not like I ever came out. Even though it's a part of me, it's, you know, not the most important part, and it's kind of more a more intimate part of me, and if it comes up, you know, if I feel comfortable, I'll let you know, but for the most part, I'm not going to be coming out, and that's just, that's just me, though. So. Even now, you know, you still get those things where People are like, you know, you should change the way you dress or the way you act or the way you speak or anything like that. And I don't want to be that person. I don't want to control who I am or decide who I need to be so that someone else can be comfortable and more happy and things like that. And even when I get from my sisters, they're like, well, you should be a little more feminine. You should be this and you should be that. And I just have to tell them no. That's not that's not me, that's not how it's gonna work. I mean, sometimes, but that's not it. And it definitely shows in the way that I dress and the way that I interact with people. Um, it's just been a way for me to really be comfortable with myself and really learn to live in the lifestyle that I wanna be, more so than always saying, hey, this is who I am understand that I'm just going to live that life and I'm going to be that person. Um, and so when I finally got the chance to be around my family again, I decided that I'm going to dress and act and be what I want to be and say what I want to say. And I guess that's not the most explicit way of coming out, but they definitely noticed there, there was a change in me and they interacted with me differently. and. Um, it was definitely more of, for lack of a better term, like an awareness of, of who I was as a person and what they saw me as as well. Coming out has changed my life in that I can be um, authentic and be my true self. Uh, there's no having to lie to people about my identity, my sexual identity, or how I identify. Um, it has changed my confidence level as well. Before, I would keep a little bit of myself reserved, and I didn't like that about myself, and now I feel like I can be myself and be more open with the world and know that I am confident with who I am, and it's okay. Um, being out at Pacific has actually helped me more than hindered me, um, because when I came here my freshman year, I was looking for my niche, and um, I found it through the Pride Alliance Club, being out of Pacific really just like got me involved. Um, otherwise, if I had not been out of Pacific, I'm not sure if I really would have been involved in anything else because no other identity-based clubs really pertain to me here um, other than the Pride Alliance Club. I had the opportunity to meet um, years and years later 
a particular donor, somebody who had given a lot of money to the university. Just randomly, we happened to be sitting next to each other at a wedding. And, and I said, Bill Jones, oh my gosh, I, I know your name. You know, you were so generous to Pacific. You know, my name's Derek Izetti, it's nice to meet you. And he said, Derek Izetti, you're the reason I gave that money to Pacific. And I went, uh, what? And he said, yeah, he said, when I, when I first met your dad, we had dinner and, and he was trying to kind of encourage me to give back to Pacific and one of the first things he told me was he said, you know, my firstborn son is gay, I love him so much, I'm totally supportive. And he said in that moment he decided to give the gift. <laughs> so just goes to show you, sometimes coming out, um, you obviously can, uh, can gain a lot from it from a personal perspective. but. I guess financially we now have a $1 million gift annuity at Pacific <laughs> that's kind of real directly due to the fact that I was actually open about my sexuality. And my initial impression when I came to work at Pacific is I thought, wow, coming from an undergrad education at Berkeley, this is going to be really conservative, right? It might be really tough for me here, but you know, I haven't had that experience at all. I feel like Pacific is incredibly welcoming. I've loved attending some of the events that Pacific has put on, like I've, I've manned the booth at Stockton Pride, at Sacramento Pride, um, and I just, I'm really pleased and I guess I would say I'm pleasantly surprised at just how open and welcoming it's been here. Coming out for me wasn't difficult, but that's because there have been so many people before me who had done it and faced terrible consequences and so, um, when I'm able to hold hands with my boyfriend, when I'm able to talk to my mom freely uh, about my sexuality, I know it's because uh, you know, people like my uncle and people whose voices have been heard and people who have suffered. So, like, I don't know. I, I have a lot of I owe a lot to the people that have come before me. Even though we are like sexual minority, you as a member of the queer community aren't defined by like how much sex you have. That isn't all of who you are, you're exponentially more than that. And I think that's something that gets lost, especially when you're in the process of coming out. I just think it's important to, to live your life in the best truth that you possibly can. And that's what I try to practice every day. It seems really crazy, but something as simple as shaving your head and cutting your hair really low as a female really gives you that empowerment that that level of, level of comfort in yourself. Find someone who you can talk to, like here at the Private Resource, Resource Center, that would be great. You can just talk to them about it because once you get more comfortable coming out to people, uh, it can seem less intimidating, but also it's you accepting your own identity. So if you really don't, if you like, don't feel comfortable coming out to other people, at least be able to kind of like reflect on yourself and feel comfortable knowing you are and what that means for you and that can kind of like because you don't need to tell other people like so sexuality doesn't have to be open it's one way of living your life uh, coming out is a very personal experience uh, and it's also one that requires great strength and i don't think people who haven't had to come out about uh, any major issue in their life uh, facing the fear of rejection i don't think people can appreciate the strength it takes to come out you don't want to have somebody pressure you, you don't want to do it rushed or anything, uh, just make sure it's your time and you'll know really when you want to come out. The most important thing is being honest with yourself and after uh, seven years of wrestling with that and not being honest with myself and trying to change who I was inside because I thought in order to be a person of faith I had to do that, um, I think that's utterly important for someone to first come to terms with themselves. And that's really, in my mind, the beginning of the coming out process. Because no one can tell you how to be gay. I mean, they can, but they won't be right. Because it's your life, and it's gonna be your life no matter how you live it. And it's super cool in here, and everyone seems so friendly, and I just don't know why I don't, like, come in more often. And sometimes I wonder, like, eh, is it because you're still kind of, like, are you, like, slightly ashamed to be gay? So I think that coming out doesn't solve everything. I think there's always parts of yourself that you still have to grapple with. And that's okay. As just you find people, you connect, and you learn to grapple with things in groups and communities, and you're not alone. And
that's all I have to say.